Hi there. Welcome back to Guitar and Song. Last time we learned Wicked Game by Chris Isaac, which is a wonderful piece, right? So you learn B minor, right? A major, and E major for that song. And hopefully you're getting very good at that song. Hopefully you're actually practicing it. Today we're going to keep it relatively simple. We're going to learn a couple new chords, um, but we're going to stick to this general format for now until we start getting a little more advanced. And so today's song is going to be Amarillo by Gorillaz. Some of you may know it, but the chord structure is D minor, C major, G major. Then D minor again, and then F major, and G. So I'm going to tell you what I think the best way to play the song is, the best ergonomical choices, but you can throw those out the window if you choose, right? Now, D minor is held like this, and I don't think anyone's going to argue that this is fairly straightforward. Most people know D minor in this shape. So get out your pens if you need them, and I'm going to give you some numbers. So first write D minor, D lowercase m. Then above that write 0, 0, 0, 3, oh I'm sorry, 2, 3, 1. So again, excuse me, 0, 0, 0, 2, 3, 1. That's what you need to write down, okay? And remember, you're writing from bottom to top because that's how tabs are written on the internet. So that means zero, 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 two, three, one. And so I'm holding middle finger on the G string of the second fret, the ring finger on the B string of the third fret, and the index finger on the E string of the first fret, okay? Now we try not to play the top string because it's not part of the chord. But you can play the second string down, the A, all the way down, that's fine. Okay, the second chord we're going to focus on is C. So for C, you just write C, and above that, you write 0, 3, 2, 0, 1, 0. Okay, so C major. Again, 0, 3, 2, 0, 1, 0. Ring finger on the A string, 3rd fret middle finger on the D string, second fret, and index finger on the B string, first fret. Next one we need is G major. So we're going to do this. Now again, I said I was going to mention the ergonomical choice. This one's okay. Nothing wrong with this G major. It sounds really nice. But for later, when we play the F major, it's really convenient from the F position to just slide up to this. So this is the position for G I want you to know. So we're actually going to take our index and create a bar against all of the six strings on the third fret, just like we did with Wicked Game using B minor. Now we're doing G major, but we're doing it here. So third fret with the bar, and then what I'm holding is 0, 5, 5, 4. I'm sorry, I said 0. I meant to say 3. Excuse me. So 3, 5, five, four, three, three, because your index is holding those, right? So those are three now, the top and the last two. So that's G major. Okay, and you already know D minor, so we just learned that one. And so we repeat that, but the next time through we play F, and that's here. So it's exactly the same as the G major shape. I'm oh, sorry, this, the same, uh, it's the same as the G major um, yeah, it's the same shape. I wouldn't call it the G major shape, but it's on the third fret, right? That's how we play G major. And what we want to do is slide this down by two frets without changing anything about the shape. And that will produce F for us. So this is G, and this is F. My fingers are in the exact same position, so the same relative position to each other. No changes at all. I'm just sliding up like this. 
So I'm just using my, I'm loosening my grip between my thumb and my index, and I'm going to the next string, the next uh, fret position. So from three to one. Okay, so G major is here, and F major is down here. So, the structure of the chords, D minor, C, and then G. Then D minor again, then F, slide up to G. And that's it, that's the entire song. So practice those on your own for five minutes. Okay, welcome back. So, we're talking Amarillo. And if you want to learn the strumming pattern for the song, listen to it on YouTube. But it's a heavily electronic song. There is some guitar. And I think that you should kind of feel it out for yourself to really understand how you want to play it. Because everyone plays it differently, no matter how much you try. And the way that I would do the strumming pattern is like... So it's down, down, up, down. Down, down, up, down, 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 up, down, 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 up, down, 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 up, down, down, just like that. So if I do it, it's gonna be like. Now you can make it a little more embellished because if I were to play it my own way, based on how I remember it, it would be more like. Okay, so you could do it any number of ways. You could do it as single strums too, so. And I think single strums sound very clean. You don't worry about what's happening in between the chords. It doesn't sound as dirty, um, but you have to have a very good sense of time. Otherwise, you're not gonna know when to, to strum again. Now, if you're singing, you have that anchor. So while you're singing, you kind of know, oh, this is when I need to strum the next chord. And hopefully it should be that straightforward, okay? So that's the strumming pattern. So again, Just like that, right? Okay, so you've got your chords, you've got your D minor, you got your C, you got your G, D minor, F, and G again. So practice that with the strumming pattern of your choosing. But when you listen to Amarillo on YouTube, you're gonna find that there's a bit of a loose, kind of jangly folk strumming pattern. So see if, you, see if you can emulate it. Let me know what you think. Practice it for a little bit. And let's just move right along to the next part after that, okay? So the next part is the vocals and the melody. Now, really good thing to do, of course, is to just pull up the song. So you pull up your, your browser and you type into the search engine Amarillo Gorillas tab, okay? And it should pull something up. It'll show you the chords. It'll show you the words. And hopefully, if they're good, they'll show you the chords on top of the words. If not, you can write them yourself. But first one is D minor, right? The mountains are waiting. And the words don't fall exactly on the chords, so it's going to take a bit of practice and, and really listening carefully to hear when you're supposed to sing. But let's just break it into pieces. So the vocals and the melody of the vocals is like this. Just give yourself the chord to, to kind of establish your note. And again, if you're having trouble singing, 
listen to the YouTube video, sing along, try to repeat a section, and really just, you have to practice and get close to the note. And if you really need to, you can try to play it on your guitar before you sing it. Some people benefit from that. I personally prefer to sing until I find the note and then I carry on from there. So I listen to the song as he's performing it, as they're performing it, and I try to sing at the same pitch as them, on the same level as them, okay? So, D minor. The mountains are waiting. Pretty simple line, so if I were to strum with the normal strumming pattern. The mountains are waiting. Then back. The full moon is coming. So just do those two lines. You're starting to notice a pattern in the class, right? You do two lines, you repeat them, and then you move on. So again. The mountains are waiting. The full moon is coming. And just practice that over and over and over again until you feel comfortable singing and playing at the same time. Again, if you can't sing and play because it's too fast or too tricky or the chords you're not used to, sing first, play later. Or play first, sing later. Break them into pieces and then try to merge them together later. Okay? So maybe you just do a single strum and sing. Maybe you don't even strum at all and you just sing. The mountains are waiting. A full moon has come. There you go. And you just practice that until it feels good. Same thing with the hands. Okay, so that's the next part. And let's continue with the structure of the song. So he's gonna sing the mountains are waiting a full moon is coming this is still verse next i got lost on highways but don't ask me where i've been or what i've done No words here for a second. Comes back in, right? So it's the next verse, almost the same thing, but we come back into the verse, so this is the second one. So he starts singing before the verse begins though, so you're here. Oh Lord, send me a transmission forgive me for what i've become now if you have trouble with that practice so you go back to the the part where he doesn't sing right He's going to start singing before the verse. Oh Lord, send me a transmission. Forgive me what I've become. And get that down before you move on to this next part. So. The sun is going to save me. Put a little love into my lonely soul. Okay. So that's everything up until a pretty thick instrumental section. And after the instrumental section, we come back and he repeats the sun is going to save me, the same way the verse does. The sun is going to save me. And then, 
Put a little love into my lonely soul. Okay, and he just repeats this chord progression over and over and over again. And finally, there's a little bit at the end that you have to pay attention to. So. Now he's gonna sing, now, oh, don't you know I need her loving you? And the way this goes, the second part I know, just from memory, right? So, I need her loving you. It's no desire, is what comes after. So before that line he goes, oh, don't you know I, Need a love in you. It's no desire. And you just repeat. So my suggestion is for this song, practice the chord progression because it's for your hands. It's tricky. It's not the easiest uh, transitions from D minor to C and the G. And then D minor to F to G. And you really have to be confident and go for it. Otherwise, you're going to hear a lot of little intermediary sounds that don't sound right. Okay? So you got to practice the guitar and the chord changes a lot. And then you have to practice singing along with the song. So I recommend listening to it while you're walking or jogging. Um, listen to it while you're isolated. Uh, maybe shower, kitchen, whatever. And just hum along to it, sing along to it until you feel like you can match the melody and you understand kind of the vibe. And then give it a chance, right? Try to play it with the guitar. And really don't worry too much about when the singing starts. Worry more about singing correctly. And, uh, and try playing along with the video, right? Whatever, whatever video you find that shows it, um, whether it's a live performance or just the, the studio recording, I love the studio recording, it sounds great. So you can practice to that. Okay, and and that's it. Now you just have to play the song, okay? And the last thing for us, for today's class, is to play Wicked Game once more, okay? So just review the chords, B minor, A major, and E major. Okay, strumming pattern for this, right? Let's see. So I would have to listen to it and pull up that strumming pattern again, but you probably know it. And you're, you should be confident enough at this point to just put on the YouTube video listen to it and play along with the chords you're going to notice that these songs are not all that different sounding and that's i did that for a reason i want them to be similar enough until we step up in difficulty and really just practicing the singing feeling comfortable repeating the same chords a lot and uh, gen gently kind of working our way into more complexity okay so give both of these songs a chance let me know your thoughts on performing them, okay? And if you are willing, I would love to see your recordings. So you can send, excuse me, you can send recordings of yourself playing the songs if you're confident. I'd like to see them. Normally in my class, when we're not online, we have people in the round, and one at a time we try to play a section, or one at a time we try to play the song itself. And then, of course, many times over, we play the song together at the same time. Now, sometimes they fall through the cracks. People feel, uh, I don't know, put off or that they can't do it or they haven't you know, practiced or performed enough. And that's totally okay. 
one of the hallmarks of the class was just the freedom to try, the freedom to sing. And if something goes wrong, big deal, big whoop, no one cares. It's not, no one's judging you at all, right? We don't expect you to come in and, and blow us away. But sometimes it happens and that's great, but it doesn't have to. The meaningful part of the class is that you practice the songs over and over and over again until you break through the physical barrier, you break through the psychological barrier, and you get to the core of your own performance. So you're you, your story, yourself, but playing these songs that were written already. And we can hear you through their songs. It's kind of a beautiful, kind of a beautiful um, conduit. Okay. So give Amarillo a shot and give Wicked Game a shot. And again, if you feel confident and up to it, record yourself using any camera, phone camera, it doesn't matter, and send it to me. Uh, you can send it to, let's see. I'll write it out for you. Okay. So you can send if you decide to take a video, you can send that recording to this email address. So that's A-K-O-U-N-C-R-E-A-T-I-V-E -E at gmail.com. So akuncreative.com. Send a link to YouTube, whatever you have, that's fine. I really would like to see them. And if I see nothing, that's okay too. Good luck. Let me know if you have questions. I'll see you in the next class. Bye.